WebSockets, let's talk about WebSockets, what they are, why they are bad for you and why you should not use them as much as you want to use them. It's a very interesting technology. It's a very interesting piece of tech web sockets which you can use but you should not use it because of many reasons and i want to cover in this why that is the case first of all let me just quickly brief you on what web sockets are exactly it's a bi-directional communication mechanism built on top of tcp and works on browsers right so browsers are notoriously bad in terms of providing different different kind of connectivities for example you cannot exactly do a udp call from a browser right but you can do TCP calls sort of in a way using WebSockets, but WebSockets are inefficient as well, right? So they do a lot of masking and a lot of work, uh, which doesn't purely make it a TCP replacement, but it's still like for the most part, because you guys would not be doing a lot of work over WebSockets in most of the applications, it should be fine. Now, why I say that WebSockets are bad is because in a lot of use cases, you can just replace WebSocket with HTTP polling. Yes, you will get a hit on the real time of the thing but you will unlock a lot of scalability and reduce a lot of headaches let me tell you why that is the case so imagine a typical architecture where you have the server over here and then you have multiple clients right so c1 c2 c3 c4 all of these people now if you're using websocket let's say you establish a websocket connection with these four people right now because of the way how websockets work all of these individual connections are stateful right so you cannot just drop them and reconnect them without losing the state of the connection right now you can build your web sockets in a way where they become stateless but that is not where the power of a web socket is right if you are using web socket you probably also want to maintain state associated with it secondly let's say this server is old now so you pushed a commit for example over here let's say this server boots up which is a new server now so how do you even replace these connections and take them to here right it's it's just not possible you cannot just take these connections and put them them here you have to like disconnect them first disconnection pipeline has to happen and then the reconnection thing would happen which would again destroy the state of these web sockets which you have created over here right so that's the second problem third problem is that in web sockets because networks generally are unreliable you have to make sure that the reconnection strategy is inherently built in right so you should be making sure that what happens when your socket connection drops how it should reconnect and so on and so forth because web sockets in inherently work over networks and networks are unpredictable they can you know you have to implement health checks for example they can randomly terminate because of whatever users internet connection dropped or something happened so you have to anyway build that layer of reconnection and fourth thing is because these websocket connections are very long lived they can exhaust resources of your server if you're not doing the cleanups properly or you know if you're not doing the lifecycle management properly there are very few things where i think websockets make sense for the most part you can replace a lot of your workload from web sockets to http polling http polling works beautifully because anytime for example let's say you're having this server one imagine the same architecture over there which had like multiple clients and then you have server two which is here and now the server two becomes the new server over here and the server one is the old server so what you can effectively do is just put this server into draining mode right so any new connections that come they would go directly to server two and your server one would only handle the responses of the existing connections that exist right i mean you can also say like why not mehul then implement the same thing over here also the reason you can reliably do it over here but not here is because http connections are not long lived right you can keep them alive using keep alive and all of that but they don't necessarily need to be long lived you can just these requests usually are less than a few seconds right if you're implementing it properly these are less than a few seconds in duration so the moment your new server get deploys or maybe like you want to add a fleet of new servers immediately you can just do that without any problem without any worries but that's not the case with web sockets in general right so let me show you an example of both these things again like people will say that i keep on plugin for me on but this is the best way to give you an example with real products real life products so that you actually understand what people use in production what real companies use in production is why i am able to tell you these things otherwise i mean you can just ask a youtuber who's just reading a documentation or just saw 
an interesting video and then they create that topic. But I am giving you an example based on the experience and the things we have seen working on Fermion. So again, I would start with the fact that we are working on Fermion where we provide one of the technologies that's coding labs and assessments, right? So this is where I would show you where we use WebSockets versus where we don't use WebSockets, where it makes sense versus where it does not make sense. I'm not saying WebSockets are completely useless, but you should always use them wherever you possibly need to, not wherever you possibly can. Everything else must be done using HTTP calls. So let me tell you where making use of WebSocket works and where it does not with an example on Fermion. So Fermion supports two kinds of labs, the IO lab and the interactive lab. So let me give you an example of an interactive lab by opening it in a new tab. And also let me give you an example of an IO lab by also opening that in a new tab. So you see, these are the two kinds of labs that exist on Fermion today, which you can use. This one is an interactive lab where you get a workspace like environment over here, where everything is happening you know, just like you would expect it on a real system. And this one over here is the IO lab example where, you know, on lead code and other platforms where you practice DSA and competitive coding, that is a typical architecture where you can change languages and so on. So over here, if you closely observe what I'm writing these commands, if I, let's say, create my file over here and it automatically appears over here, these systems cannot possibly be built using HTTP. I mean, you can build it, but then on every keystroke, you have to send that character on an HTTP call, which is way too expensive, right? It's way too wasteful. It's going to be way too slow because I'm writing commands inside a terminal, right? I want to quickly get feedback. For example, let's say I do bun install express. Now bun would be very fast. So let me just do npm install express instead. So if I do something like this, you can see this cursor moving. I need this feedback. I need this continuous feedback that can only happen through a WebSocket because WebSocket can is a bi-directional thing. I write something and I get that feedback over and over again, right? So this thing only can be done over WebSockets as a thing. You have to establish a WebSocket connection of a client over here to this WebSocket. And here we have to handle all of that, that what happens if I disconnect or what happens if server gets old or whatever. So we handle all of those things, all of those states here because it's required. There is no other alternative. However, over here, the story is different. For example, let's say if I switch to Node.js and if I write console.log, hello, let's say like this. So now if I run this, I don't necessarily need a WebSocket here to get the status of the run, right? So you can see over here, I get my output and I see the expected output is this. I don't need a WebSocket here because this result can be polled. I don't have to do a keystroke mapping to backend on every single keystroke. This is a completely different environment. This is a terminal. This is a real terminal where you are writing command and it has, has to be like continuously synced with the backend system because these outputs, these things which are getting sent by the back end. You know, you can technically implement this over HTTP also, but it will be just extremely bad user experience. For example, if I run a command like sleep five and echo one, then I don't know, like if you implement it over HTTP, you have to send this whole command, get the output back and it will just not feel like a terminal, right? Because inside a terminal, I can also just control C at the end, right? So you have to implement a lot of things like that. So that is a real world, real example of where you would need WebSockets without any doubt, where you can use WebSockets. We could have technically used WebSockets here, but it's a bad choice because the more sockets you have, the more headache you have to take care of these servers over here, the less load balancing you would be able to do properly. Most load balancers work great over HTTP servers. Load balancing WebSockets in general is a hard problem, right? And it's an expensive problem also, because if you look at AWS in general, AWS also gives you an AWS API gateway that can operate as a WebSocket load balancer, but under the hood, AWS itself just does the same thing that any message that you are getting over here, that would be sent to a Lambda. So your Lambda can respond and API gateway would be the one that's handling the WebSocket connections, right? So AWS asks you to technically make your WebSocket stateless. Your state cannot be stored in in, you know, every single message. So AWS asks you to store the state somewhere else in your database. And from there you restore the stuff, right? So this is how the scalable architecture of WebSocket works, where you have an API gateway, the API gateway invokes lambdas and you store the state in DB, get it back probably, and then use it to respond to the messages, right? So again, just to summarize, WebSockets are not bad. They are a really good piece of technology, even though they are slightly 
I mean, not slightly. They are like very inefficient compared to just raw communication over TCP or even UDP. But yeah, I think I strongly believe as somebody who has been working for a very, very long time with coding and this whole space of IDEs and all of that, you must not use WebSockets where they are not necessary. They look very nice and shiny, but they bring a lot more problems than they solve if you are using it for something that can be solved with HTTP polling. So it's not a skill issue. If you want to keep using it do that but then of course like if you scale it up to a certain extent you would be doing a lot more problem solving than it is required so yeah that's pretty much it for this video and of course if you like it make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that's all for this one and i will see you in the next video very soon